Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So, in today's video, as you can see here behind us, we're in this no-till bed that's here in our yard where we planted potatoes. Uh, it's time for them to come up. They're ready. They've bloomed. They've died back, especially this here. They're a little early, but, you know, it's real hot and dry here, so that... That probably had something to do with it, but we're gonna go ahead and get them dug up. And we got some fun plans for this bed that I can't wait to show y'all. So anyways, hope y'all enjoy. So behind me here is the the sweet potato bed y'all seen us plant the other day. And as I was re-watching the video of, uh, of that when it came out, I realized that I called this ginger and it's not ginger, it's turmeric. Why in the world I called it ginger, I don't know. I don't think anybody ever caught it in the comments or anything, but I did catch it myself when I said that. But anyways, y'all, it's turmeric that we left in the ground from last year. And uh, it came back on its own like it didn't freeze out. I thought it would have, but I guess it never got cold enough last winter it did. If I'm right, I don't know. I think this row was uh, French fingerlings, and this row was Austrian crescent. Is that right? I can't I can't remember the name of that potato. It's a potato we'd never planted for. We've planted fangling potatoes, but we'd never planted this one. And man, I tell you what, that little deer, he's doing a number on them. I noticed there's a sunflower over there that's got the top bit out of it. Is it? Yeah. So but now where the bone sauce he's is. He's going around the bone sauce and walking over there to that. So I guess I need to refresh up what's on the Wooden post. garden post. All right, let's see what's under this. Now, I don't expect this end of the guard, this end of this bed to do very well. It's going to be better out there because this end stays a little more shady. Look, there's some taters. Yep. Better than no taters. Yep, throw me a... Here youngins, you. get us a bucket. Look at that metal bucket. that don't know about French strangling potatoes, we really, really enjoy these types of potatoes. They're a small potato, Boy, good, but man, they are good. They make some good French fries. They make good stewed potatoes. These potatoes are definitely done, though. Yeah. You can just tell by how easy they're falling off the roots. They're finished. Look at that. I'll pick up the loose taters there and then I'm gonna go back through and bust it up. Yeah, that's one thing I've seen so far where we didn't heal these potatoes. They're green. Look right here, y'all. What just come off of two hills of potatoes. We're thinking now that maybe this row was the fangling potatoes, potatoes and the other ones because fangling potatoes we've planted in the past that had that red skin to them. So 
I don't know. This is why we need to keep better record of what we do, which is one of the reasons we make YouTube videos. So we can look back and see which one I planted where. All I've done was box the dirt back, So look here how much we've got so far. And now you see some with this green on them, which was one thing we run into. And I just cut those first and cut that off. But we're still digging back through them too. That old bucket right there is full. Yeah, what is this? A, uh, it ain't much. Maybe 25 foot row, if it's even that. If this is any indication what we're going to get up there, boy, we're going to be swimming. Yeah, I know it, man. If, if the potatoes up yonder in that field actually make like these little bit right here did, we got it. That's good, because I'm a potato connoisseur. Yes, you are. Well, I like these like this right here now. I mean, I like taters anyways, but you take these little taters like these. Look right there. These little ones make some good potatoes. And, you know, I think it, in my opinion, I think taters are easy to grow, don't you? Yeah. If we literally stuck these in the ground, it ain't done nothing. We haven't done anything to these potatoes. Yeah, not to these. Now, of course, up there in the field, we've had to cultivate those. And, uh, but which, if these had had to stay here longer than they have, we've got a lot of Bermuda grass that's fixing to take over right there. We got a lot of weeds that was coming into this bed here. Well, yeah, I think where we done these no-till like we did, and we weren't able to come in here and, and heal them up, I think that's why we have so many with green tops on them. Because they didn't get that extra layer of dirt flowed up there around them. And this this bed, I mean, if you saw Andy plant these, you know that we were just kind of trying it. it yeah, this wasn't something we were depending on, was no. it? We had extra potatoes and we stuck them in the ground yeah. just to see what they would do. These are so pretty. They are really pretty potatoes. I hope they taste as good as they look. We, we're we're going to have to go back and look at that video when we planted these. Cause I come out here that evening and planted these. I think you were inside, inside cooking. I will say that about YouTube. It's a great way to keep track of what we got going on without having to write it down. Ain't it? Well, cause I'll just tell you, if I wrote it down, you know what I'd do? Lose where you wrote it. I'd forget where I wrote it down. Yep. <laughs> Did you show them how many? Look at that, off of one little vine. Yeah, I mean, it's hanging plum full of taters. And right? I'm sure there's taters in the ground under it yeah. that didn't come up with it. They're really putting off. I'm pretty sure the ones that I planted over in the leaf pile were the German butterballs. So. I could be wrong because I don't know, but none of these right here look like what uh -oh. a German butterball is. That's what I was like. pulling up over in that Is it a German butterball? Yeah. Remember, they were yellow inside. Yeah. Look at that. Yep, I'd say, in my opinion, alongside of sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes are some of the easiest plants there is to grow. And I found that it don't seem like they really require a lot of nutrients either. Because we hardly ever really put much fertilizer or anything by them. I don't even know. I can't remember if I put any fertilizer by these. So, you done seen me show you this bucket here. That was the row on the left. And then the row on the right. We got about three-fourths of a five-gallon bucket there. Now, that's a pile of potatoes. Considering what they Considering come off how the vines never looked wonderful out here anyway. They were never what I'd call immaculate. No, they never looked great. No. Um... And this is a very, very small spot. A person could literally till up just a little bitty spot in their yard and have enough taters for several meals. Yep. 
So yeah, she did mention this is a no-till spot. However, I think y'all kind of figured out from the last two no-till beds that we're done with that. We're done with no-till. We're going to till from now on, unless uh, the mood hits us again. So I'm going to till all this up, and you notice I've thrown the potato vines back up into the row here. Most people would probably take those and put them on their compost pile or throw them somewhere or another. But I'm going to till them back up and let them break back down into the soil because I don't plan on having no potatoes here anytime soon. So if any type of potato disease or whatever's on that, it don't matter. Um, so I'm going to let them break down in the soil and they'll help feed that soil back. But I think, I mean, honestly, I believe we could about dig these over here, but I think I'm going to give them just a little bit longer because those vines still got quite a bit of green in them. Give them a couple of days. Yeah, they're dying fast, though. <laughs> so they're probably done. But I think we will give them just a little bit longer. We wanted to get that bed cleaned out because, like she said, we got plans for it. What are we doing now? <laughs> Looks like we found us a water hole to play in. Yeah, we've, uh, so we've come over here to, to the place where we mow hay at to cut some river cane. There's river cane all up and down this creek here. And we're going to use it sort of like a trellis type thing, which we'll show y'all here shortly. But while we're over here, you know how kids are. They find them a hole of water. They can't, they can't help but get wet. I don't blame them. How hot as it is. Jacob, scoot over. I'm going to skip this rock. This creek is just full of these flat rocks like this right here, and they're perfect to skip. Look at that. I jumped it out there. Uh, yeah, that I see that. Rock. That rock wasn't there. I think it. Yeah, keeps it keep going. How deep is it, little man? It ain't too deep, is it? Oh, it's about knee deep. He's good. Found it. You found the rock I skipped. How you doing? Come here. You hold. You see. You take your middle finger and hold it out like that. Lay the rock on top of it. Then you hold it down with your thumb, and then you got your finger right there. And then you want to... Well, I'm left-handed, so I'm doing it backwards from what you'd be doing. It. Yeah, you got to do it with your right hand. You'll be doing it with your right hand. Oh, you, oh, you got, did you it! You short skip out of it. The water feel good, Maggie? Yeah, that's a good one. You want to lower your wrist when you do it. There you go. You got three little skips out of it. All right, y'all go swim. We're going to go cut some of these reeds. First, I kind of got to cut me away in and out of here. Growed up thick in here. Well, if you don't know what a river cane is, it's sort of like a bamboo. This is a river cane. That one's dead. But there's a whole big, thick patch of river cane starts about right back there and goes all the way up the creek to a big bend up there. My grandpa planted this there a long time ago to help the creek bank from washing up into the bottom back here because the field is right behind you, right there. So he planted this stuff here to keep it, to help the erosion from washing the creek bank on up into the field because it was washing away at one time. But anyway, now we like to come over here and there's so much of it, we can just cut however much we want and it doesn't really matter. And we use it for uh, trellises or stakes or whatever. But I think we're gonna probably need to cut quite a bit of it today. Yeah, I'd say to so. To do what we're wanting to do. Yeah. I'm just cutting them off at the base. And these little poles where they're, where they're like a bamboo, they're really stout. You know, they're, they're sturdy. Especially those bigger size ones like that one right there.
know where this river cane come from? Where? It used to grow on the creek behind the house. Really? Behind mom and daddy's house, right there in the corner. And when they cut the timber, whatever they done when they cut the timber, it done away with it. Huh. I feel like I'm getting eat up with something. Well, I think we got us enough. I think so. Hopefully that'll ride there from here to the house. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. We ain't got far to go. No. Go down here and see what them youngins are doing. All right. I'm pretty sure this one right here's usually got more water in it than this. Yeah, I think so too. I ain't seen no ticks crawling on me yet. Not yet. Yeah. We'll see. We'll find one stuck to us here after a while probably. Look at that pile of I know, logs I that washed it. up right there. I bet that come when we had that hard rain, what, was it back in the winter when we had that real bad yeah. flooding rain? So tonight we're starting uh, with dessert first. We're going to have some homemade chocolate ice cream. Now, things are going to be a little different the way that I make it. I make it like Kate from Venison for Dinner. Y'all heard me talk about her numerous times. I really, really look up to her. And, Lord, y'all, she just got some awesome, awesome recipes over on her website. So, please be sure to check her out. Um, so, I'm making this with my fresh cow's milk. So, of course, cow's milk. The cream's on the top. The milk's on the bottom. Uh, one key to this recipe, if you're using fresh milk, is do not shake your milk. That's something that I learned from Kate. Is uh, We're not going to shake our milk up. And we're going to need about four cups of cream and milk. Um, if you're not using raw milk you'll want two cups of milk and two cups of heavy cream so we're just gonna gently pour that in there and i'm gonna try to get as much of that cream as i can okay also over here on my stove which i know y'all can't see i've got a little pot of chocolate chips with a little milk in them uh, melting the chocolate chips. I like to do my chocolate ice cream that way, y'all, because you still get the chocolate ice cream, but you still get, you get some little chunks of chocolate in there. Um, so that's the way that we like it the best. So the next thing we're going to need is three-fourths cup of sugar. We're going to combine that with just a little vanilla. Gently stirring it. We're going to do a little touch of salt. And again, we're just going to gently stir that. Now, this next part may trip a lot of people out. But what we're going to need is four egg yolks. And according to her recipe, this part is totally optional. I have not done it without the egg, so I can't speak to how that tastes or the texture of it. But your egg yolks, I know, give you a creamier texture. So we're gonna get all those mixed in together. Then we're gonna pour them in here. So this is not a cooked recipe, y'all. This is going to be just like this into the ice cream maker. I'm going to tell you, tripped me out the very first time I did it, but I've made it many, many times since then, and everybody's still alive. So, personally, I would not do this with, like, grocery store eggs, um, commercial eggs, but because I know that my chickens are healthy and... 
disease free, taken care of. I'm not going to take you far down that rabbit hole, but um, I would, you know, definitely look into it. Like I said, I wouldn't do raw eggs with um, grocery store chicken, but I mean, is grocery it, store eggs. Is this your egg and ice cream too? Yes. Um, I wouldn't do it with grocery store eggs, but I do trust my eggs. and So that's all up to you if you do that step right there. My chocolate's about melted. I have it on very, very low heat. Just enough to melt that chocolate. Those chocolate chips. I'm gonna go ahead and slowly pour this chocolate mixture into my ice cream. Now, if you want vanilla, you could just stop like here. But let me slowly get this in here. world as far as food goes is ice cream. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I can live off ice cream. So I got me this thing and y'all we have been loving it. I'm gonna slowly pour my mixture in. Make sure all my little chocolate chunks that set up in the bottom come out. this thing go. Here in about an hour, we're going to have us some good chocolate ice cream. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my oven on to 350 and I'll show you why here in just a few minutes. All right, the reason we're heating our oven up, we're going to be making homemade macaroni. So I've got me a little bit of Velveeta cheese here. This is the small block, so we're probably going to use Maybe half of it, a little over half. I'm gonna put that in a little oven proof pan there. We're gonna put us a nice hunk of butter in there and a little bit of meal. Just enough to cover the bottom of a little bread pan here. Y'all can see that there, but I'm just going to pop that in the oven until the cheese is all nice and soft and melted. It'll take it a little bit. These are the potatoes y'all saw us get up just a little bit ago. I'll do about half of just a regular box of You just kind of hide. So you want to stir in your cheese. 
If your macaroni looks dry, just add milk till it looks nice and creamy. Simple as that. Well, y'all, as you can tell, it's, it's, different day. it's the next day. And so, um, we had some company come by yesterday evening, right as I was finishing up supper. Yep. And uh, it was probably two or three hours. We was visiting with some old friends, and, you know, they just came by to say hello. The kids were playing, and, uh, yeah, so we didn't get to eat our supper for a while. And anyway, eight, eight or eight thirty yeah. final last night we got to eat, but we're not complaining. It was nice getting to talk with everybody. Absolutely. And so we didn't get to finish this video up like we normally would. We didn't get to the work we were aiming to do after supper. But you know what? It's all in God's timing, and it was nice to visit with friends. And guys, you're just gonna have to watch the next one. That's see right. what we were up to. So. Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching. Hope y'all learned a little something. Until we see y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good one.